Welcome everybody to the second half of my top 10 most anticipated games of 2016. That's right, this is the second part of a two-parter video that was split due to the overall length of the original video. Anyways, don't watch this unless you've seen the first part, which you can watch right here. It's okay, it's good. I will wait. Hmm, okay. Either you listened and left or pretended to leave. Well, I can't really force you now, can I? Whether you care or not, let's get on with it. Before we begin, let's start with an honorable mention. Let me start by saying this. How many games, exactly how many games can you name me right now that take place around 10,000 BC, the Stone Age? Yeah, that's what I thought. Even more interesting is that this is a first person shooter. Remember that, Far Cry has been in many locations before. Modern military island, check. Modern African desert, check. Modern tropical island, check. Modern mountain island. Check. And now back to the unmodern Stone Age. I guess you could say Far Cry Primal is a far cry from the other games. <laughs> Come on, that was good, right? Come on. Give me that one. Give me that one. Yeah. You can tame multiple different beasts, like wolves and cougars. Wait, sorry, 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 not cougars. What am I, stupid? Don't answer that. I meant jaguars, yeah, jaguars. You can also tame loads of other beasts as well and switch them at will. And in this case, a jaguar is more stealthy, as it gains stealth with you. Day and night cycle, where nocturnal enemies are more active at night, and some of them are less active at day. You can even lead your tribe to fend off other tribes, upgrade your equipment by hunting, similar to other Far Cry games, ever since Far Cry 3 of course. No more guns, no more ranged weapons besides a few bows and a few upgrades. I think it's really cool. Not to mention an in interesting story that actually has no English at all, just all subtitled. So I'm really curious to see how people are going to react to that. I for one don't mind, so it's up to you whether that minds for you. This is why I watch anime all the time, so reading subtitles is no problem for me. Problem for you? Maybe. You can also use your pet owl to firebomb your enemies, call in a bear to wreak havoc, or toss a bee grenade at your foes. <laughs> Get ready to get Primal on consoles, except Wii U. So that means PS4 and Xbox One, February 3rd, and for PC it'll be a little bit later on March 1st. Four. Oh, that's not good. Gears of War 4, how could I not? Oh man, I can't believe it really happened, seriously. How many thought that there was gonna be another Gears after Gears 3? Not many, I'll tell you that. And even though we did have a uh, Gears Judgment, it still wasn't the continuation of the story, just more details given on the prior events. Gears 4 is coming and it seems to be another fantastic adventure into its incredible adventurous and action-packed universe. I read up on the story of the game and it will try to distance itself from the Great Locust War and put you in the shoes of a less experienced soldiers like JD and Kate. Versus Marcus Phoenix, you know, who was a battle-hardened, roided-out badass veteran, alongside other hardened, roided-out badass veterans. The developers said that the game is going back to a two-player co-op system, instead of the four-player co-op system we had from the last game. Any fan of the series is more curious than anything to see what comes next for the Gears of War of the universe. According to an interview with Rod Ferguson, an employee of the developers of the game, The Coalition, said they want to make this story a personal, intimate, dark, and mysterious. If you want to check out that article, I will link it below. Although no specific date has yet been given, besides a release window of 2016, I have a feeling it will come out near the holidays or on the holidays, just as prior games. I'm thinking November maybe, October, November, somewhere around there, I'm sure. I think it'd be perfect, especially if the developers want to be spooky, I think around that time would be perfect. And you know what? I have missed the incredible world of Gears. Gears had a very unique gameplay that was really fun and kind of brought third-person shooting back to the mainstream because after they did it, a lot of developers tried copying that, and not many could do it just as well as they did. So I'm very excited to see 
see how how everything has changed and if will we see anything of Marcus's legacy is he dead it's well, there's a lot of questions to be answered and I think many of us will, will definitely be excited for this one I have a feeling they might do what 343 Studios did for Halo 4 and 5 and make one hell of a game and to those who uh bought the Gears of War Ultimate Edition which is a remastering of the first game we'll be able to play the beta of Gears 4 early My anger and fear are already flaring and beating me down. Surely you know what all gamers talk about this series and the Bloodborne series, the difficulty. Yes, the games are notoriously difficult and that is somewhat expected for Japanese action RPGs, but the Soul series and Bloodborne series really take the cake. I mean, the developers plan and bank of making these games a trial and error experience where just about anything at any time can kill you anywhere. Even the game of the year version for Dark Souls PC port had the subtext Dark Souls Prepare to Die edition. What other company has done that? No one else but from software with stellar music that is hauntingly exciting and gothic. The Souls series offers a fantastic and addicting combat system that allows you to possess many different kinds of armor and weapons as well as an interesting but cryptic story that really makes you wonder what will happen next and what the fuck is going on. No, it's not for the faint of heart and a game that won't hold your hand, definitely not. It's you versus the world and versus the world I mean everything. I mean I literally sunk over 100 hours into Dark Souls Prepare to Die edition and I still have Dark Souls 2 waiting to be played. Game of the year no less. It beckons to me. It calls Calls to me, I shall play it and I shall beat it, probably. Not to mention the Dark Souls series always had pretty decent multiplayer. One of the most famous aspects of the Dark Souls series is how you interact with other players. They leave you messages telling you, hey, you should jump down here, it's a secret, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And most of the time they're just trolling you and you'll just end up dying. But it's very cool to have a game, even when you're playing by yourself, you'll still interact with a bunch of other people in the real world, telling you do this or do that, telling you tips or screwing you over. And like I said, <laughs> mostly screwing you over. And you can also be invaded by other players, PvP. P. Oh man, there's so much to do. You can have co-op. It's just an incredible games, really incredible games. I don't think anybody has done atmosphere better than Dark Souls lately. March 24th could not come soon enough. Xbox One, PS4, and PC, prepare to die. Never had to bleed in a jungle just to find your real brothers. Had to turn your back on God. Just so someone will finally treat you like a son. I was completely surprised this game was actually going to exist. After listening to the announcement and drooling over the trailer, man, the hype was real and it still is real. So glad Mafia 3 is happening. So damn glad. I beat and loved the hell out of Mafia 2. It was such an incredible story and so damn cinematic at the time of 2010 and still is. Hell, it looks rather nice and plays very well even if it's somewhat dated now. In case you didn't know, the Mafia series are single player open world sandbox and story rich games. Never played the first one, but luckily one and two aren't connected to a another story-wise. I always loved the crime family drama, as in Mafia, Mobsters, and Godfather. The works. The characters and the realism of the Mafia games are just incredible. It really feels like you're actually talking to a human being or watching human beings interact. It's a game that you can literally just watch all the cutscenes and pretty much watch a very entertaining crime drama. So if you don't plan on playing the second game, you can just watch two to three hours worth of cutscenes that pretty much sum up the whole game for you. It's a lot more fun to play, but you can also just watch it. Sure, it won't be as fun but it'll definitely be entertaining for damn sure and what i really really love and was surprised is that mafia 2 and 3 are connected to one another that's right the events of mafia 2 did occur in mafia 3 at a much earlier period mafia 2's time period is mostly the 1940s and 50s while mafia 3 starts in 1968 following another protagonist i won't spoil anything from mafia 2 because i would probably end up reviewing that game for you guys but it's one hell of a ride like i said having a protagonist of mafia 2 
switch from my rags to riches mobster to Mafia 3's Vietnam veteran who joins the black mob after surviving a murder hit by the Italian mob. God, this story will certainly be very dramatic and fascinating, no doubt. Especially if you have such cool supporting characters that's shown in the trailer. Just what I love from crime dramas, when characters die and it's sad and shocking at the same time. Consoles get ready as well as PC because Mafia 3 is coming. Earth is now ruled by the Advent Coalition and their alien masters. But we have acquired new weaponry and operatives. The battlefield is more dangerous. The enemy has grown far more deadly. Renew humanity's will to fight. I think many of you saw this coming. I was so hyped and ready to play this game originally back in 2015 November, but the game was delayed and you know what? I was fine with that. I was fine with that. If it meant the game was not yet ready for us to play and experience, then it wasn't ready. You can't force it. I will always prefer us to wait so developers can improve their game versus rushing out a poor product that will need a ridiculous amount of bug fixes and patches to try to fix a broken game. Oh God, that face. The reason I'm, I am super excited for XCOM 2 because the first entry in the reboot of the series was a masterpiece of a game, truly a challenging game. That really made the experience a truly unique and super addicting. And I already reviewed XCOM Enemy Within, also with this expansion, Enemy Unknown. And you can click here for that. I implore you to play that masterpiece of a game and hop on before you try to beat this game. But it's really not too important to do so. Unless you want to skip out on a magnificent game, then be my guest. First of all, the aliens have won in this one and enslaved most of humanity under the false pretenses that the aliens have pretty much gifted humanity with their technology and brilliance. And many humans worship them as their god, in a sense. The game offers offers many unique species of enemies now, from snake women to actually fighting other brainwashed humans, which is awesome. Also not to mention that you are still the commander, and you have a colossal flying ship, which would make you think it's straight up related to S.H.I.E.L.D.'s helicarrier. God, even the box art is very inventive and cool. To make an outline of the iconic XCOM alien with human skulls, it's unsettling and amazing at the same time. It also happens to be the game that releases soonest from this list, which is awesome. You bet your ass I will buy this and review this bad boy. Expect the review of the game for sure, and that's February 5th. Sadly, it will only currently be on PC and OS X. Consoles will have to wait, but I'm pretty sure it will be ported, just like the previous games. And that's all everybody. That does it for my top 10 list of most anticipated games of 2016. Did any of the games on your radar make the list? Tell me below your top 10 video games that you can't wait for. I for one believe this year is a fantastic one for games, and film especially film. Speaking of film, if you don't want to watch that similar list but with movies, you're in luck. Click here. Or if you want to watch my review of XCOM or anything else I did, mosey on over the links and click there. Thank you all for watching, and a game review will be next. That's right, I will be going back to basics for now. Like, subscribe, and share if you care. This is Random Junk, signing off.